Representative Wu, welcome back to our program here. Uh, simple question. If Republicans add more money to public education and give teachers a pay raise, is that something Democrats would get on board with to give school vouchers to certain people? Well, in short, absolutely not. I think what Democrats have said, and I think a lot of Republicans uh, who are a part of the coalition have said, is we will absolutely in no way, shape, or form open this up, uh, open this door. We will not, um, we will not crack Pandora's box open just a hair, right? Because the whole point is that the state has been underfunding our public education system for decades and decades and decades. And a tiny little bit of money doesn't fix anything for one. And it's not a good trade for the what will inevitably be the collapse of the entire system. When you open the door to start yanking money out for this, then next time we'll yank it out for that, and then so on and so forth. Do you think the rural Republicans who have joined Democrats in the past, do you think they'll come around and actually vote for this, this special session? I That would be really confusing to me because, you know, like I... I'm in Houston. I only really have to deal with like um, uh, HISD, Houston ISD, and then maybe Ailey ISD, and that's it. But rural Republicans, they may represent 20, 30 school districts in their area. And every single one of those people, every single one of the districts have, has trustees, has superintendents that they have to answer to. And, you know, that's a lot of people to have mad at you for to, and then to go to their communities and tell them, like, you voted against. Our kids, you voted against um, the, the, the employer that employs 20 percent of your county. Right. Those kind of things. I don't know how they get past that. And I don't think they will. And it's not something um, that when we talk to rural Republicans, they're not voting for it or voting against it based on uh, on politics. They're voting against it because it's bad policy for their community. That's it. If Republicans reach an agreement to pass this, can Democrats do anything to stop it? Well, I mean, look, uh, one, I don't think that's going to come. That's going to happen. I, you don't I think, think you don't think so. I think the rural Republicans are standing strong, especially given now uh, the, the new climate of the Texas legislature. I think the rural Republicans say, you know what, they're, they're going to be mad at me if I do. They're going to be mad at me if I don't. I might as well do what's right for my community and do what's right to make sure that my families and my kids get taken care of. Um, and even when it comes to it, look, Democrats have um, been in the minority for what, almost 30 years now. Um, and this is not our first fight that we've had to come in and, and try to fight it, um, uh, you know, with, without the, without the majority. So we're going to fight it in every way possible, whether it's through procedure, whether it's through talking to other, our, our colleagues, whatever it is, we're going to keep fighting because public education is probably the single most important thing that our state does. Representative, we had one of your colleagues on the program last week from San Antonio, Barbara Gervin Hawkins. And I know everyone's probably chatting about the things that she is saying. She said that vouchers are not going to kill public education. She's a Democrat, of course. Yep. She says there aren't enough private schools to take uh, the 4.5.4 million public school students in this state. There aren't enough to handle all the public schools uh, in, in this state. Are Democrats overreacting to this? So look, even like, let, let's take like HISD, let's take my, my area, right? Even a like one or 2% change in school populations has dramatic uh, multi-million dollar consequences uh, for these schools. Uh, and it, it's not just that. It's also retired teachers. Whenever you have fewer students, you're going to have fewer teachers. Fewer teachers means fewer teachers paying into teachers' retirement, which is barely um, solvent right now, right? We just put some more money into it. But it's if we remove teachers from the system and they're not paying into teachers' retirement, the system's going to collapse. And there's been studies done in various districts are saying like if if one percent leaves, if two percent leaves, if five percent leaves, these are the consequences, and they're not small consequences. But more important than just what is the immediate danger, the long term danger, the long term harm is this opens a door to permanently defund a already defunded system, right? Um, 
you know, we wouldn't do this to anybody else. If this was if this was the fire department, if this was a law enforcement and they were already on the rocks and they were already having trouble recruiting. They're already having to shut go going from operating five days a week to four days a week. And we say, let's take more money away. There would be protests, there would be riots in the street, right? But for some reason, we we're telling educators, we're telling teachers, well, you must just do it for the love of teaching. We don't need to pay you. That's absurd. If this doesn't pass this special session, and if this doesn't pass this special session, do you expect the governor to fulfill his promise and keep calling special sessions from here on out until it does? Look, I, I can't speak for the governor. Um, I think he's made a lot of unwise uh, political decisions. Um, just time and time again in the way he deals with the legislature, the way he's handled this from the from day one um, was was offensive to members, not just to Democrats, but to Republicans as well. Uh, his heavy headed nature, the, just the way he instead of coming and talking to people and working with people, he just sends out his edicts from on high. Do, do whatever you want. The body, we are a separate branch of the government. We will do what we want. I want to ask you about something else that happened in the state house uh, the past few days. We watched Speaker Phelan stand up to the far right of his party, saying there is a rot inside the Texas GOP and it's festered, he said, for far too long. What's the reaction among Democrats to what the speaker said? I think, you know, the speaker has finally hit on what not, not just Democrats, but just observers from across the spectrum have said for a long time is that over the last 10 years, especially with the rise of Donald Trump, um, the elements that have come into the Republican Party are more and more concerning. Um, it, it's not just uh, it's not just white supremacists. It's not just Nazis, but it's people who um, believe in a theocracy. It's people who believe that women should have no rights. It's people who believe that we should control every aspect of someone's life if, if, it did, if we deem it doesn't meet up to our moral standards. Those are all concerning, and people have been observing this change for a long time. But I think finally somebody – and Speaker Phelan is not the only one to say it. There's people at the congressional level. There's Republican um, uh, talking heads and people who are who, who have observed, observed these things have said repeatedly the where this party is going, where the Republican Party of today is going, is not the Republican Party of Reagan. And it's often not a Republican Party that people want to be a part of. And it's certainly not the party of Reagan, indeed. Uh, Representative, thank you for the time. We appreciate it, sir. Absolutely. Thank you.